Hello and welcome to the Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to take a look at the high-end handheld temperature screening device. Uh, you may have seen a video we've done previously which was on the entry-level unit. This is the high-end device which is a DS2TP 21B-6 AVF. It's got quite a few extra features and functions that the entry-level unit doesn't have which we're going to obviously have to take a look at in this video. It's a bi-spectrum unit, it's got an optical and a thermal sensor. The thermal sensor is a 160 by 120 resolution and the optical is up to 8 megapixel. It's got obviously a lens cover keeping them safe behind there, which we can obviously lift and out the way as such. It's got a focus adjust on the side so you can set your optimum focus level. It's got a 16 gigabyte SD card under this flap and then also a USB port for charging and also data uploading. One of the main features that this unit has that the other unit doesn't, it's got Wi-Fi connect, connectivity capability so it can connect to your access point for streaming at the back end. It's also got a Wi-Fi hotspot so you can tether your mobile device to it. So if you're out the way of any access points, you can still stream to your mobile device, which one of your colleagues could be carrying. And when you're both out and about in the field, you've both got obviously access to the actual thermal readings as such. So this is a three and a half inch LCD touchscreen, 640 by 480. The unit's got a measuring range of between 30 and 45 degrees with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.5 degrees. It's got a trigger on the front which is for capturing your snapshots but this will also record video as well, one or the other which you can set in the menu. It's got a tripod mount if required, you can mount this in situ. Hot swappable battery on the bottom. This can actually be used with a third party charging device so if you've got one or more of these you can actually use them as you know, hot swappable in a truest sense, old one out, new one in and then off you go. This will keep this unit running for a maximum of five hours. Like I said, it is touchscreen, but it does have the rubber buttons as well, which you can use to navigate the menus. It's also got two-way audio speaker and microphone, which allow you to talk to the connected mobile device. And you can Bluetooth a set of headphones to this as well, if uh, preferred or if required as such. It's IP54. It's got some measuring distance of two and a half meters, and it's got a tested drop height of, of two meters. So it is quite a sturdy unit as such. So once it's booted up, which it has now, we're just going to take a look at some of the settings in the menu. So I'll bring this a little closer to the camera so we can see what's going on. So we've got some, obviously, some icons on the screen. It's measuring a centre and a max temperature in the top left-hand corner. This is the centre point here. It's also got a hotspot, which is measuring the top left-hand corner at the moment at 29.7 degrees, fluctuating across the bottom. We've got Wi-Fi, SD card, and also battery status as well across the bottom. So I'm just going to press the menu button shows some icons across the bottom which I can go across one after the other. So the range setting allows you to set the temperature reading range and also the minimum maximum reading temperature as well. Personally I would recommend that you, you leave that on auto out the box. It's set up already for temperature screening so it, you don't really need to mess around with those figures too much unless you had some specific use for the unit. But the, but the options are there for auto and manual. We've got our palettes across the bottom. All the usual favourites are um, are there as we move across you can see them all one by one purely personal preference in my opinion I, I still prefer the conventional white hot you know from a thermal sort of point of view they are a detection device rather than a, a surveillance device at the end of the day and then you've got your temperature alarm setting above that so is it above temperature alarm below in, in between and also an insulation setting as well obviously for temperature screening we want to be on above temperature and that's set to 37.5 as you can see there. Uh, across one more we've got thermography. This is where we can set up our reading points in the scenes. We've got a hot spot which is present at the moment. We've also got a, a centre spot. We don't have a cold spot but that's available as well and we can also set up a custom area. The box is quite a, a useful feature because that allows you to set a designated area on the screen where it concentrates its measuring so you can set that up like so and pull your box to the desired size. There we are. So then we can concentrate on the readings within just that box. If we remove the center spot and also the hot spot, all we've got now is a maximum minimum average temperature within inside that box. So if people walk past the camera, it was on a tripod or they're walking up to it, their head goes within, within the box. That's where the measurements are um, concentrated. Any temperature measurements outside the box are ignored. Um, so that presents any potential sort of nuisance measuring going on. So we've got our thermal options there. This is a combination of our optical, which we can see here, our optical image sensor. You can only stream one or the other, but you do have a picture-in-picture -picture and also a fusion setting, which combines the, the both the optical and the thermal. And then we've got just our thermal sensor there as well. 
So that's entirely up to you how you use it. File is where all our recorded files and images and video are kept. And there's nothing on the unit at the moment, but we are going to obviously capture a couple of images and a bit of video later in this demonstration. Settings tab where is, is where we've got all of our setup parameters. So under thermography, we've got various options, the temperature range, emissivity 0.98, that's about right for humans. So that doesn't need to be changed. We've got distance, which can be set up to however you want it. I've got it two meters. You can measure up to two and a half meters away. Reflection, reflection temperature, that's quite important. That's the ambient temperature of the room you're measuring in. So that wants to be set by yourself, depending on the ambient temperature, but it, do, it is quite an important setting that you do get that right just to keep it the measurement accuracy so I'm a little bit high there so I probably want to be down a little bit to about 21 degrees is about where I'm at today but you can set that accordingly depending on the environment you're in it's got a humidity setting as well there you can calibrate it with a black body if you've got one of those with you as well you can put the settings in there the calibration distance and also the black body parameters as well image settings we've got the picture and picture proportion there we've got display settings which we can turn on or off. See the time, I can turn that on. It's off at the moment. We've got our status icons, which we've seen earlier when I first fired the unit up. It's also an audible warning when the temperature warning's met. It'll sound a little beeping noise. We'll leave that on so we can see that later on. We've got our camera settings. So at the moment it's set to capture. If we click on that, we can have it to record one or the other. I'll do a demonstration of both later on. Picture settings. It's got a flashlight, picture resolution. Obviously I've set to 2 megapixel, but we can click on that and adjust it there up to 8 as well. The actual device settings here, obviously time and date we can set that up. We can set our units of measurement up for temperature and distance. Degrees Celsius and meter are the two that are set out the box. Uh, a couple of additional sort of settings there, light supplement, light. File name, header. Auto power off as well, we can get it to do that. So if you weren't using it for a period of time, it'll actually close down on its own. These are our Wi-Fi settings here. So I'm already connected, but it'll search for its access points and allow you to connect to one there. And it's also got its Wi-Fi hotspot and Bluetooth settings there if you, you, you had a need for those. And you can also initialize the device as well. And then we've got our information at the bottom. And you can see at the very bottom IP address, uh, that's what it's picked up on my access point but we've got all our firmware versions there as well which will no doubt come in useful at some point obviously new firmware versions are likely to be released to give additional functionality so you can keep an eye on everything from that screen there so that's a basic overview of the unit i did mention earlier that you can you can tether this to your mobile device which i've actually if i put my temperature screening unit down and just quickly grab my mobile i've actually got my unit streaming at the moment to it there is sort of three methods in which you can connect to the mobile device one is connect both to the same Wi-Fi. The other is tether the device to your phone or the third is to tether the phone to the device. So there's my mobile device then. You can actually, you may be able to hear me speaking now because it does have like a two-way audio facility built into it. But you've got various settings across the bottom there, which obviously a colleague can be carrying the phone. You're still getting your temperature measurements. You'll get your alarm through on the phone as well. You've got all your status icons. The time needs adjusting. I can sure it's not one in the morning. I'm not that devoted to my job to be at that time picture or video you can save to your phone there's a couple that i've saved previously a video and a, a snapshot as well We've got two-way audio we can set up some of our thermal parameters across the bottom there but obviously it's best to do that from the actual device itself and we've got a palette option there as well which we can change anything you change on the device will be sent to the phone so just be mindful of that um, when you mess around with these uh, settings here but that's the actual thermal App or a quick look at that. So what we'll do now is we'll do, we'll do a demonstration of a normal temperature and also alarm temperature from the unit using the help of one of my colleagues, and then we'll um, we'll upload it to the PC and have a look at them from there. Okay, now I've got the handheld the temperature screening pointed at my colleague. You can see there that the temperature is being measured with inside the box. We've got a maximum temperature of 36.8 and a minimum temperature of 26.4 which is obviously a normal temperature reading as such. I'm just going to take a snapshot of this particular screen by pressing the trigger, like so. And we can see we've got a successful capture there. So I'm now going to ask my colleague to do is place a bottle of warm water on his forehead. As you can see there, we've immediately got an alarm condition. You can hear the buzzer, hopefully, going off got a maximum temperature of 41.8 degrees which is over the 37.5 degrees threshold at this point if you had it linked to anything in the back end it would be sending alerts through to that as well 
uh, we'll have a quick look at 4200 before we end this video so I'm just going to take a, a small video clip of this particular state if I move that down to record like so we can now come out back on the live screen if I press the trigger we've got a little record count on the top of the screen which you can see so I'm just going to give that about 10 seconds recording obviously you can see the blue cross which is the minimum temperature going air wire that's just obviously constantly search for the lowest point and the high point is obviously fixed permanently on the the warm the warm water bottle so that's that recorded so I'm going to take the unit to my PC now I'll have a quick look at the um, at the capture and also the recorded video and uh, also uh, link it to IBMS 4200 Okay, I've now got the handheld connected to my PC. When you connect it up, it'll appear like a USB drive on the left-hand side, and you'll also have a folder or folders with the relevant information, snapshots and video in. So you can see there the snapshots are captured as a JPEG, and the video is captured as the as an MP4, which is Hikvision's own bespoke MP4. So that'll play perfectly well through their own VS player. So if you open the JPEG, which is the one I captured earlier, this is a normal temperature reading. We can see it's pretty much captured the screen of the reader. So we've got all the information there. We've got the maximum the minimum and the average temperature and we've also got the, the cross indicating the highest point on my colleague's forehead and all of the other information is, is present as well so that's how your, your captured images will appear your video captures I can quickly show you on VS player which is a little segment I captured afterwards which is the alarm condition you can see there is playing now so about 10 seconds they have alarm condition but basically you've got similar scenario minimum maximum average temperature you've got the hotspot which is planted firmly on the warm bottle of water and you've also got a maximum alarm temperature 41.6 41.5 degrees there which was causing the handheld to obviously beep into alarm mode at the time so that's a, an example of, of a piece of recorded footage there so just one last thing I want to quickly show is under IVMS 4200 we mentioned earlier that you can link these to the back end so I've got my handheld added IVMS 4200 and that's its Wi-Fi IP address there so we can obviously view the streams in live mode we can actually take thermal and the optical stream this is the thermal that I've got run at the moment but again you've got all of the temperature reading information visible there as well if we click on the mosaic tiles at the top we can go to event configuration and this allows us to set up uh, temperature measurement alarms to come through with IBS 4200 so I can turn the temperature measurement alarm there's also a pre-alarm uh, linkage as well so I can turn that on and I can click on the edit linkage to set select what I want 4200 to do under an alarm condition so I've got a few ticks there already you can send an email if need be we can have 4200 make an audible noise I've also got pop-up pop-up window as well so that's already ticked so I'm just going to quickly again demonstrate the unit measuring a high temperature now you can see we've got a pop-up on the screen there which is showing a live view and also the alarm capture obviously my handheld was moving at the time so the two images on the bottom are not as clear as they could be but obviously under um, a detection a screening process then the obviously the user would have the, the handheld uh, stable in their hands at the time of, of uh, reading but you can see there obviously my colleagues setting the unit off with a warm bottle on his forehead and you can hopefully hear the unit beeping as well and you've also got uh, information on the right hand side there as well including your temperature information yeah, so that's it for today's video if you've got any additional questions on ds2tp21b6avf slash w uh, the high-end temperature screening handheld please get in touch with dynamic ctv's technical department or your account manager direct please subscribe to our youtube channel we've got new and interesting videos coming all the time and we'll see you next time bye for now